Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, so I'm not Thomas Voss. Uh, I'm going to give a talk, well, we are going to give a talk, Marco and I, about Unity and Ubuntu Touch, and there will be a slide on Mir, so <laughs> everything is not lost, but Thomas told us, you know, this morning that uh, he can't come for personal reasons, so that's why we, we learned that this morning, we tried to just prepare something. <laughs> So we, have a, we will have a demo of Ubuntu Touch, Unity 8, Unity 7 at the same time, and a little bit of uh, so Mir as well. Um, so, okay, so let's start. Um, so I'm Didier Roche. Um, I'm working for Canonical uh, for some years. I started basically to package and to integrate the Unity project uh, from the netbook version to what we have nowadays. And we release more and more components, and now I'm the uh, uh, I'm the release manager, basically, of the Ubuntu Touch project. And so, Marco. Yes, I'm Marco Trevisan. I work uh, for Canonic as well since about three uh, two years, and before I was a community contributor of Unity. Yes, we did exist, and uh, I was not the only. So, community was involved in uh, the Unity development at the beginning, and. Um, now I'm still working on Unity. I maintain BAMF, which is a component of Unity, and uh, I also maintain LibWink and GNOME. That's it. Yeah, so that shows that we had external contributors, you know, uh, to Unity, <laughs> not only can Nicole at the time. And yeah, so you signed the CLA. I think most of people came from the troll, so you know, let's start to <laughs> let's start with some. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Ryan. Are you still working on the TV? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that the TV is not, you know, the priority. Right now, yeah. we are more on the phone and, you know, the tablet. And as you know, <laughs> the TV is still in the scope. Okay, so basically, we, I will... Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so there is different slides on the two. It, is it to bug on events or something like that? So... Okay, so in fact, the screen are going to be a well, I should Just one second. I'm just mirroring the screen to be easier. So display, Tick. mirror display. The thing is that the slide was, you know, on both, so I didn't notice. Okay, so. Better. Okay, so uh, so Unity uh, started in 2010. Uh, we had our netbook version for quite a long time, which was called Ubuntu Netbook Remix, uh, which was a pure community flavor. Uh, and when I joined the company, it became Ubuntu Netbook Edition because it was officially supported. So we had our own launcher uh, called Netbook Launcher at the time. Uh, it was written in uh, C and... Uh, and GTK basically, and so this uh, this launcher try you know to optimize the screen size uh, to all the netbook constraints because netbook was the future at the time, um, and so then you know the uh, the need for for having you know another version of the of the uh, of the of this netbook launcher and to have this version that had stretch you know to multiple screen size and so on was needed. And so Unity was started uh, for that. Uh, this version, uh, so the netbook version, was written in Vala with Clutter at the time. Then around, uh, so after Unity was unveiled, um, there was, you know, the decision uh, to to put Unity on the desktop. But for that, we saw we had some issues because at the at the time, Vala was a very young language. Clutter as well was a very young component. And so we we basically needed to uh, uh, we basically you know n needed something to to scale it a bit more to the desktop, and so the choice was to use Compiz as a as a window manager and to have Unity as part of a, as part of a Compiz plugin, because Compiz can have plugins. Compiz has a lot of plugins, uh, and so you know at the time you say okay let's just write a, you know. A uh, small Compiz plugin for that. At the same time, uh, one of the issues with Compiz is that we started to require OpenGL 
and in 2010, it wasn't, you know, like the driver state was still pretty bad and not everyone had acceleration support and there was a lot of troll because as GNOME Shell and, you know, Unity was going to require that, uh, people were really afraid like, okay, so I need, you know, to have a 3D acceleration uh, to be able to use the modern desktop. And so some other people in the company work on another version of Unity called Unity 2D, uh, written in Qt and QML. Uh, so it was in Qt 4 and QML 1. Uh, and so basically it was their version of Unity try to reproduce what Unity 3D is doing, but only in software rendering. Uh, and so then I will talk about Unity 8 in particular. So the Unity that you have on the desktop, on the Ubuntu desktop today, is Unity and Compiz. And the Unity which is available on Touch today is Unity 8, which is a new rewrite of Unity 2D in QML, but with Qt 5 and QML 2. And this version uh, of Unity will be what will become the desktop version in the future once we will have converged between the desktop, tablet, uh, and phone. So now I think that Marco is going to talk more about the desktop version of Unity, and then I will transition to f the phone, Mir, and uh, the tablet version. Okay. So we're going to talk about what we are right now, which is called uh, Unity Comp is a Unity 7, which is still uh, going to be live for some years because we are shipping in XLTS, which we are having in, in April this year. So we need uh, to support this other five years, and uh, this version of Unity so will last some more time and, it's, and it still needs to be shaped and working well. Let's talk uh, why at the beginning we started uh, with the idea of Unity at least a canonical design, decided to define a new desktop lead by design where actually um, we're, dif we're in, a, in, a, in some kind different from the other, the other idea, so the other, the other DEI that were in the, at the period. So um, in, the, in the meantime, we had Gnome Shell that was starting and it was a uh, in development in a development state at the same time KDE was going with uh, with plasma and uh, Ubuntu wanted for the first time to try to define its our vision its our desktop why we until that period we tried to reuse the the gnome 2 version of the desktop and so to reuse uh, a new user experience that everybody else could have tried using other distributions other than Ubuntu Ubuntu tried to define its vision its it's our own, it's our own shape, something that people could see and say and uh, imagine like uh, this is Ubuntu, only Ubuntu. So uh, defining our, in our, in other words, our nature. And uh, so this vision was made by by designers at Canonical who were in, at the beginning defining some uh, concepts uh, like that uh, could be in a future be reused uh, also by other form factors like we can see now. So, for example, the simple the launcher on the left, uh, the panel, uh, the, the the switcher, uh, the, um, the the UI components we have right now on the on the Unity that will have at some point be reused by the the Unity Seven, the, the Unity Touch version, uh, and so um, by by other factors that will be TV and phone and tablets and everything else we have. So this vision, ever, I mean, though it was. Uh, not loved by every everybody at uh, some uh, some point and uh, everything uh, we can see on the on the, on the screen uh, and uh, every pixel you can see is actually uh, a reason because it's there and because it works in a, in a way nothing has been has been left uh, to the to the case so we try everything has been started uh, by, by designers us designers uh, canonical to try to get the best from user experience according to our vision um, talking about uh, the current states of the Compiz, uh, there was a Compiz plugin that uh, you can see it grows a lot from its start because it uh, started like uh, a simple plugin that was able to use a um, toolkit library which is called the Nax uh, that is able to draw basically uh, OpenGL, which uh, um, to draw, draw OpenGL. 
uh, uh, simple widgets. So basically, you try, you 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 design an interface like you could do with other toolkit with uh, libraries. But at the end, uh, this uh, sorry, okay, <laughs> okay. At the end, everything is designed uh, by, it's drawn on the screen by OpenGL. Um, so um, that was also the reason why we moved to, to Compass, because it will allow, to, to, allow to, to, to draw on the screen through OpenGL, and uh, uh, this library will have been the, 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 the actor who created the, the, the actual widgets. So the code has um, grown a lot. We still have uh, some, uh, lots of contributions uh, to, the, to the code we are, that we are keeping in good shape for uh, next release. And uh, we are mostly, well, everything is written in C++, most 11, no? They're using the C++ 11 cool features. And uh, this is the reason of the language that came actually from the fact that Compits is, Compits and 09 is basically written in C++, and uh, this is also because we wanted to get the maximum performance from, um, from our shell, starting from the language we use. The interface of, of Unity. Unity, although the, the interface per se is quite simple and uh, the components are just small, everything has been designed also from, from uh, an, arch an architectural point of view in a very complex way, because we wanted uh, basically every component of the, the, the interface to be um, or replaced or in any way be uh, fed by different uh, um, data models so that, for example, we could either use the same UI for uh, the panel, the launcher and everything else and uh, at the end, but in different ways, according to the platform we were uh, actually using it. So in a different way in the in, in, in a phone than in, than in a PC. And um, what uh, what's shown in, the, in this graph? Actually, mostly of this is uh, still living because um, the indicator, for for example, are still working the same way. And the same code base that has been done for for the desktop uh, years ago is still living in the in, in in the phone, even if lots of refactoring. But the same libraries, the same way to talk with them is still used on the phone uh, with QML interface. So uh, none of the work that has been done for this uh, Unity version that will be thrown away. Actually, most of the the, the backgrounds of it, the backends will be still working on next versions. Um, talking about the, 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 the architecture of Unity, we can see that the, the main components are talking everyone with, uh, with a different backend, which is uh, actually a different process. Uh, and then uh, we talk with different libraries that are still, as said, uh, reused by the Unity 8. The only part we, we want you to use, uh, of course, is the, is the left side where we are X11, which, uh, of course, will go away, and BAMF, which is uh, the um, application matching framework where we are using for translating the concept of Windows that we have in X11 to the concepts of, of the applications that we want in a modern uh, um, UI, desktop UI. Uh, but the most of, the ra of this uh, graph is still, still working. Um, next version is uh, going to be a, and probably the last version of this Unity 7, or Unity Blast Compits, uh, will be for 1404, where we are actually to still working hard on it. And uh, we have completely rewritten on uh, the part of, uh, of drawing the, um, the, um, the Nux windows, which are actually the widgets we have on, on screen drawn by Unity. And that are in a way that it, everything's very more efficient. Well, um, we have new decorations which are um, not more any more compatible with the old Meta City team in way, but we are tr we are new now mm, teaming them with GDK CSS, and uh, we are going to put a new lock screen which actually will match the the LightDM lock screen. 
and we are also working on the IDPI support for uh, for um, 4K monitors or uh, uh, new Retina MOS screens, which needs the, the interface to grow up based on the DPI density of the screen. So um, that's pretty much of it from my side. I, I think Didier you can came on the stage. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so well, we are still not sure that you know the LTS will be the the last version with this Unity. You can hear me like like that, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so we are not sure that you know this this version basically will be um, this LTS will be the last version with you know Unity seven in the desktop. Uh, we'll try basically you know to ensure that when we switch from Unity seven to Unity eight on the desktop, which has a very huge impact in a lot of technology, of course we don't regress. So maybe it will take few more cycles but uh, yeah okay. yeah so we we will ensure uh, that we don't regress our users and uh, so we will ramp them slowly may maybe moving pieces by pieces uh, between between the two and we plan as well we have some plans for for this transition to happen uh, but what is sure is that by the next LTS uh, unity 8 will be the default on the desktop and so we will have no more compies and uh, no more X server as you know the main uh, display server. And so that leads us to Mir. Um, so Unity uh, 8 on the on touch screens for all the phones that we support officially at Canonical uh, are using Mir as their display server. The other, so we still provide images so that uh, a lot of people can port, can make some ports, but for them most of the time to do those ports, you know, th there is some hack that you need to do on the display server. So for them, they are still using Surface, Surface Flinger, uh, which is the Android uh, display manager. Uh, so, uh, so basically, everything that you you read as you know supported officially, all the images that Canonical provides are using Mir today. They are they are all already using Mir in the version 1.0 of the phone, uh, and um, all the other are, uh, are using uh, Surface Finger but we try to work with the community so that we can help them on the driver side. So Mir is not only, you know, um, is, is not only a display server. It does multiple things. So one of the most important one in, in the way it, uh, it handles basically all the buffers. Uh, basically every application asks to ask for a buffer and Mir will give a buffer or not, depending on the case. And then the application will, you know, send back the buffer with everything done. But basically the Mir is controlling the display um, uh, and controlling all the buffers. Uh, and with that we can as well add more features like all the application management is done from Mir. So before in, uh, uh, you can see that in Unity 7, it Something which seems totally trivial is what application are open on my desktop. And in fact, it's not. It's totally not trivial to be able to match from a desktop file to a process, especially for particular process like uh, LibreOffice, uh, who has all the same binary names. So there is a lot of hacks to know if you are using Calc or Spreadsheet or Base or you know anything and. All those cases are really complex. Um, to be able as well, you know, to, to putting uh, the application management lifecycle in the display server enables us as well to have more security in the way we can restrict. Because if we, if you try to start and then while well, we don't give you a buffer, we, you, will, you won't be able, you know, to display anything to the screen. So with that, uh, so Mir as uh, the library, uh, the server part of the library is able, you know, to uh, to, to control the application. Um, so the library is implemented as of today in Unity 8. So it's Unity 8, it's this process basically which handles, you know, all the display. It has more privileges than all the other applications. It's done. Okay, it, it wasn't uh, 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't prepared, but I, I remember that I had to prepare for 40 minutes, you know, from this beginning. So, <laughs> no worry. Um, 
Yeah, so um, where was I? Yeah, so basically Unity 8 is, you know, what controls uh, Mir. And then we have Mir clients, which are most, uh, most, uh, most of them will be implement, you know, as for instance, Qt application. So Qt has a QPA to talk to Mir. Uh, we expect to have some GTK as well, backend. We expect to have, you know, other backend for other toolkits. So normally, you know, for most of application, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't have anything to change, you know, for the application to be able to talk to Mir or Wayland. Uh, of course, for stuff that are more, you know, GPU intensive or, you know, really need to talk to the display server, then you have to use the libraries, which are not ABI stable yet. Uh, nor ABI stable, even. So, thank you. Yeah. I'm not Thomas Voss, I didn't write me. <laughs> I think it's uh, most of the, you know, application management, uh, which is di a different concept from what I know. And uh, as well, there is uh, the discussion about who should own the buffer and who should give the buffer, you know, to the application to control their uh, refresh rate. Yeah, so basically Xorg, uh, so in Ubuntu, the uh, Xorg server uh, right now is building against the uh, client Mir library. So, if you have X kind of connected to Graphene, it seems like there'd be much smaller jobs to be able to answer this question. Then, would the application be able to like, work out that? Yeah, I, to be honest, I'm not really technical enough, you know, for this Mir, you know, part to be able to answer. And I think, you know, you can ask on the Ubuntu mailing list. I think that was already discussed a lot. Uh, I'm just trying, you know, to, to explain. You are an asshole, by the way, Ryan. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to explain, you know, what, uh, so what I know from here on doing the releases of Mir, but I'm not, you know, hacking on Mir, so I'm not technical enough, you know, to, to answer, you know, to the well-earned compatibility, you know, question. But you can come back to the end. I'm sure you will. Um, so, basically, Mir, uh, so as I told you, uh, so Mir uh, is a system compositor, and so the system compositor is used in the shell. Then your toolkit is talking directly, you know, to, to the shell, basically, to get all the, all the access. And so the application basically has a start-stop um, uh, event, so that we can know, you know, which application has really started uh, on, the, on the device. And Unity Next as well is one of those. And you have as well IDM and all, uh, all other, some other components. So for that, in fact, to go to that, this is the phone, uh, the phone stack. Um, so what we have, in fact, yeah, so this is an old, this is an old image. So what we had in the past basically is that for the phone, we have the uh, Ubuntu Touch Shell and apps build as Qt QML applications. Those are talking through Qt Ubuntu to the Ubuntu platform. And the Ubuntu platform is uh, using LibHybris. Uh, so LibHybris is a way to contact the Android side uh, to be able, you know, to contact, to contact basically the drivers themselves and to be able as well, you know, to contact some services. So before we are based on Surface Flinger until we switch to Mir. And so libraries was, you know, making that communication with Surface Flinger. Uh, the kernel is, uh, is an Ubuntu kernel, but in the Ubuntu kernel, we load Android drivers because there is a lot of drivers that, that are closed or that are, you know, under, expect, you know, we, that, that we, there is no, you know, free software uh, equivalent. So we are just, you know, using them through libraries. So right now, what we have is uh, the middle, the middle one. So we have Unity, uh, Unity Next, which is Unity 8, talking to Qt, uh, Qt QML. And we have a Qt Mir plugin, which is directly accessing Mir. And Mir is accessing the drivers through, through you know, the lib hybris component. And so it's exactly the same stack for the applications. So Unity 8, Unity 8 uh, is really, you know, similar uh, than Unity 7. It's even more similar in the way that we are reusing uh, the same backend as Marco was telling. So it means that, for instance, the scopes are exactly the same services that are turning 
uh, that are running between Unity 7 and Unity 8. So when you search something in the dash, you will get exactly the same result. Of course, we tweak a little bit for the phone experience, for the tablet experience, to have you know different kinds of uh, of answers. But uh, so the idea is that you always have a familiar, um, uh, you know, a familiar layout, whatever your form your form factor is. So we don't use exactly you know the same, and you say the desktop interface will be exactly the same than you know the one on the phone. That would be totally silly. Uh, so it's the same layout basically, but it the behavior is tweaked between the different form factors. And I will just give a demo. Um, so as I told, we have the display manager, the application manager in the Unity process as uh, directly. Uh, Unity as well is the input manager of the system. Uh, as well, you know, it's uh, basically the one giving the VBLANC to all the applications. So all the components that you see, you know, on the on the lower part uh, are either implemented in li libraries, so you can basically change your launcher, and you can use exactly the s all the other Unity 8 components and implement a new launcher if you want. Uh, and it's the same for the dash, for the HUD, and all the all the other facilities that we provide. So it's really easy to take Unity 8 and to ch just change one one piece of behavior by by something else. So as I told we are you we are using you know the libraries, uh, network manager for the connection, Ophono for all the um, phone parts, phoning parts, uh, Pulse Audio for the sound, and telepathy for all the contacts. So really, the goal for this convergence is to have the same code running everywhere, but a familiar UI between all those form factors, but a slightly different exper experience, so that you are really have a phone experience on your phone and you don't get the desktop experience on your phone. Um, we have also other, you know, cool technologies that are coming with uh, Ubuntu Touch. Uh, those ones are, for instance, the image-based updates. So instead of using apt-get to update your phone, uh, and have to get upgrade, you have a dump basically uh, with a, with an image, and so you, we are sure that we control the upgrade experience. Um, with that, every time we build an image, so we have a full image that you can flash your phone with, and then you can just uh, click upgrade. And if you have 10 megabytes to upgrade, you just have 10. You don't have the full image to download. We compute some Im some image diff. Um, so the phone, by default, in read-only, it enables for security as well and application isolations. But you can, you know, turn it into read-write mode, and then you have access to apt-get, and you can install any package you want. But in that case, we disable, of course, the image-based upgrades because it's a too complicated, you know, factor. But at least with that technology, we won't have any more, you know, the someone trying to upgrade from one release to another one, and then in the middle, well, okay, so. So there is a new maintainer script. Uh, what do you want to do? <laughs> Make a diff, show the latest versions, show the new version, or you know something like that. So you won't end up in a situation where the user is just. Yeah. Um, with that as well, so we have the new SDK based on Qt and QML, uh, and so we try, you know, to be able to tell if you want to write an application for Ubuntu Touch, uh, you know, this is the technology that we we think you know you should use. So click packages, click is dpkg, basically. It's really based on dpkg. Uh, and it's a way to install, because as I told, we have an image, you know, base update, but you still want to install application on top of it. And so click is a very lightweight way of telling, okay, so I'm targeting Ubuntu Touch 14.04, and my application is compatible with that version of the framework. So we define a framework version for that. And on the back end, we really work on continuous integration. And uh, and you can see, if if you subscribe to the phone mailing list every day, I send emails about regressions, image promoted, what happened. And so basically, you have a very, you, you can really have a very big insight you know, in what's happening on that. So I will try to do a demo. Because of course, so the talk was unplanned. So let's try to do an unplanned demo as well. What? Yeah. So we were totally proud, as, as you can see, because there is a VLC. Yeah. Let's do, you know, like if we are at Google I.O. and, you know, they are very cool camera device and nothing bad can happen. I think I will need to, yeah. Thanks. Okay. 
So now I just have to put like that and to not move. Yeah. Okay, and full screen maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit disturbing. Okay, so can you see it? Maybe just a little bit like that. Okay, so yeah. So by default, uh, you have the Unity Greeter, which is running like DM. So this is uh, exactly, this is not the same code, but this is the same technology. Uh, like DM is exactly the same like DM that is running on our desktop. Um, but we have a Greeter in QML. Uh, here is, so this is a fresh Im image, so there is not that much valuable data. But uh, you have all the informations uh, about you. So you can see the number of calls that you have done. Yeah, okay, like that. Yeah, so you can see the number of calls that you have received, the number of incoming messages. Um, you can have as well uh, the number of music you played, what you receive on Twitter or whatever. So this is a graph that evaluates and that's unique, you know, to every one of you. And so then we have the Unity 8. So Unity 8 is exactly the same. You have the launcher. So the, the difference with the desktop version is that it's not my default. And so when you open an application, you can see that it's open on the launcher. Maybe let's not try the camera on the camera. It will be weird. So we have the application starting with the new SDK, full screen. And I can go back to the dash. Here is the dash. So the dash is uh, quite similar to, yeah, you can still see it. Yeah, that way. Um, so you can see it, you know, as the, uh, as a Unity dash. Uh, if you search something, you will get exactly the same result. And you have the same notion of lenses that you have on the desktop. So you can add as well more lenses and you can, you know, uh, basically you can add plugins as source of, uh, of information. So of course it's a phone, so you can run a dire application as well. And to switch between applications, basically we have the right uh, swipe. And so you can switch between applications that way. Then we have some common elements in the toolkit, like you have tabs. And so, all uh, yeah, okay. So let me, yeah, okay. So you have tabs. Uh, and so this is a way, you know, to, to go between the various parts of your phone. So and uh, all those kind of, you know, uh, principles uh, are set by our design team. And we try, you know, that the design team are following, uh, uh, are helping basically with the core contributors of the applications uh, to have the same guidelines everywhere. Uh, most of the applications are done by, by the community itself, not by Canuli Call. Uh, and so it's a, it's a very nice way. We, we saw very a lot of contribution on that. Uh, so I'm not sure if the dialer app, yes, yeah, so they, they don't have any toolbar. So normally you have a toolbar if you do that, you know, on the bottom and you can go back. And here you can see a search. And the search is the HUD basically. So again, you find, you know, the, the, co the desktop components, you find them back, you know, uh, on the Unity 8. So you have the indicators as well, you know, on that side which are exactly the same backends and the indicator on the desktop. And so by the next LTS, uh, this UI should stretch to the desktop. So this cycle, let's just go back quickly so that I can. Yeah, it was all reversed, which is a little bit, you know, <laughs> weird. Uh, okay, uh, so what next for this cycle? Basically, uh, it's just that um, so we start to to support Android 4.4 drivers, uh, which bring bring us in addition to the Nexus 4, the Nexus 7 2013, and the Nexus 10, and the, those are the three that we support. So we are going through uh, from the phone to the tablet for the trusty version, which is you know the LTS. So it will be the first version for the tablet UI. Uh, and as well, in addition to change the application to be able to work as well on the phone and the tablet, uh, we are working as well to uh, so that we can get the same application working on the desktop. Um, but even if your application is phone only, uh, we have a way which is called the size stage, uh, so that you can still show your application which only have a phone layout on the desktop. And so we will try, 
this is no promise, no commitment. We just try to have a very, an experimental Unity 8 session uh, in 1404. So it won't be installed by default, but it will be a little bit than the first version of Unity. If you install the session in IDM, you, you will be able to switch between Unity 7 and Unity 8. But it, to be honest, it won't be production ready like for uh, everyday use. So we have different resources. As for everything for Ubuntu, you can find us on uh, Freenode on IRC. And so we have, yeah, basically a website for that. Yeah, the title is still in Italian. <laughs> so thank you. Um, if you have any question, maybe uh, we have two minutes or something like that, I guess. Yeah, three minutes, okay. So we are happy to take them. Yeah. Oh, Qt Ubuntu. Uh, so, uh, so the question was, what is Qt Ubuntu? Uh, Qt Ubuntu is a QPA plugin, basically, to be able to talk to me and all our service backends. So, just QPA plugins, so that uh, people can be more abstracted, you know, from, uh, and they don't have to talk directly to the service through bus or anything. So, it's an implementation in Qt for for. It's a good question. I'm not sure if Upstream wants to. The thing is that the uh, back end, basically, you know all the services. Uh, so they are upstream. I'm not sure that any other distribution took the location service or you know any kind of those service. But if upstream Qt is happy, you know, to to be able to talk to the service and take that upstream. So uh, I'm the risk manager. I don't <laughs> work on that. We have three. So we have 300 components basically that are part of Ubuntu Touch. So if you start, you know, to talk about one in particular. Uh, I'm, I have no idea, but uh, I know that for Qt uh, itself, because it's someone in my team who is working, uh, you know, on Qt on the Qt packaging. I know that the, our policy for all our patches is first, you know, to go to the Qt upstream but tr tracker and uh, to get it approved or at least reviewed, you know, before even distro patching. So I know that for Qt we have a very um, we don't want to diverge at all, uh, like what happened, you know, uh, in uh, Kubuntu and Qt4. Um, and uh, even I think uh, if you know about it, like you know the application menu, the exporting menu as well. So we are rewriting the plugin right now, and it's under review, and we wait for people from DGR to review the patches. So if you can, you know, just send the message. <laughs> Any other question? Yeah. So right now we. Start try to build a developer story. So the developer story is, you know, documentation to say if you want, we, we think that Qt uh, is best layout uh, in the way that you have designed for that, we have giving you, you know, a theme and, uh, uh, and as well a lot of facilities to build your application more easily. So we are trying to push for that officially, but GTK application will still run because uh, we still rely on a lot of GTK application uh, and um, there is, you know, no plan to drop them or from the distribution, if you start to install an application and it can't, you can't even run an internal session, there is no point. So there is, and I don't see any reason why you know we will get rid of GDK. There there's also already an experimental version of GDK backend for mirror support, so it's the only thing we, to have a, a better experience, we can uh, tune the team, uh, probably it's good. also GDK application will look more ubuntu -ish. Any last question? Seems not, so thanks everyone. <laughs>